Hello everyone and welcome to the Gurukul Collective. In this episode, I sat down with Krishna Sivakoti, a researcher at the Theoretical Biophysics Group of Johannes Kepler University. When I first met him, he described himself as an average student, which I found hard to believe at the time and still do. After all, he's working as a researcher and his project is funded by the European Union. I believe his journey as a researcher is worth sharing and students, especially from Nepal, can gain a lot from this conversation. Let's get started. Oh, welcome, Krishna Dai, uh, to the episode. And without wasting any time, I'd like to jump straight to the questions. So my first question is, why did you choose to come to Germany and Austria for your PhD and your studies as a whole? Uh, what factors influenced your decision and how did this opportunity with the European Union come about? Thank you, sir, for inviting me to this year Guruku Collectives episode. And it's very, my pleasure to be here. To talk about my journey of my master's degree and PhD, first I came to Germany for, to pursue my master's degree in chemistry. The initial thought I applying was Germany is very known for its world-class education and especially in research. And if you could get the opportunity to, to enroll in the globally recognized university, yep. which is one of the top 100 universities of the world, University of Bonn, where I studied my master's. Okay. And as you know, you are also studying here, so you know in Germany and Austria, in public university, it's tuition free. Yeah. And you can earn or earn your living yeah. allowances by working just 20 hours per week. So I would say it's really very less challenging than to do the master's in, in Nepal. Yeah. So that was my initial thought while I applied to my master's. So during my master's, I mainly focused on theoretical and physical chemistry. Yeah. And as a part of my degree, I joined Max Planck Institute for Cold Enforcement in Ningmulai Mandir, where, where I pursued my internship and master thesis in computational chemistry, focusing on the research field of photosynthesis. As soon as I finished my master's, I saw an opening of a European Union funded doctoral program yeah. where the research, it's aligned with my research, what I did in my master's. So it's also about photosynthetic uh, light harvesting complex. So it really aligned with my research interest yeah. and also the professor who is my supervisor here now. He's also one of the uh, leader in the field of this research. So it was kind of an easy decision. Yeah. Let's say it's a no-brainer for me to choose, choose this position because it perfectly aligned with my interest, my experience and you know. Okay, so my second question is, how has your experience been so far as a Nepali student here in Europe? What challenges and surprises have you faced both academically and also culturally? Well, I had a very mixed feelings when I arrived here in, in Germany because of its weather. Maybe I arrived in the winter semester, so winter in Germany is kind of brutal if you are coming from the northern hemisphere, like from Nepal, where you see the sun every day. Yeah. And the second is like the way we learn things, right? In Nepal, we are like habituated to do the subjective exams, but here you have to be a critical thinker. Yeah. And you should like open your analytical part of your brain. Yeah. yeah. In order to <laughs> initially it was difficult, but later I slowly adapted to the system, education system here, and it became a very norm when you know how to crack things yeah. academically. I find it like really challenging and rewarding as well yeah. because research standard here is very, very high. Yeah. Well, when I, I decided to apply and to come to Germany, I already anticipated that it will not be easy yeah. because when you buy a one-way ticket to a new country where you don't know anyone, leaving your loved, loved ones behind and packing your future in a suitcase. So, when I arrived initially, the navigating the bureaucracy here is a quite challenging thing, especially in Germany. Uh, bureaucracy and paperwork are, you should be very patient. Yeah, yeah. And another thing is language barrier. Mm. It's Though my courses it was entirely in English, but in order to integrate, to make friends, it, the language barrier is, was there. So when I arrived after one semester, there was COVID and it was kind of a strict lockdown. So it was a little bit harsh situation at that time, but I think it was the global pandemic and everyone can understand how that time was. Yeah, that's right. And regarding the people here, like they are very direct and they are not so expressive in their communications and their attitude towards time okay. and their way of life. Like 
Yeah, but it is difficult in people. I yes, think. exactly. And their work-life balance, punctuality, this is what I am really impressed of. You often say that you were an average student, yet you got a highly technical research position under an EU grant. Many would argue that this is no average achievement. What do you think contributed to your success? Is it hard work, persistence, networking, or something else? And for students who feel they are average, like me, what advice would you give them if they want to pursue a field or a position like yours? Well, if you, if you phrase that to a, uh, I mean, it's kind of a significant achievement, I would say. Uh, but it's not like solely you are genius or you are academic prodigy. It, it, it involves like many factors, yeah. like hard work and persistence. You know, if, if, if you are persistent in what you want and if you are determined what you want to be, it's easier. Yeah. And like some people might say, I don't have natural talents or something like that, but so called natural talents can always be compensated by hard works. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a messier knowledge situation. You know, one has one is naturally gifted and yeah. other is hardworking. What we will be judged by is what we, by the what outcome. our outcomes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Our if the outcome is same, it doesn't matter whether you are naturally gifted or not. Yeah, because your hard work can always always compensate. Yeah, and sure. for me, it was the main factor to consider this question was the alignment with my research interest. Is I all is all passion is also something yes I, I I wanted to I wanted to use my experience from my master thesis and that was I was experienced in interested in and I'm knowledgeable in so it would be it, it's my very logical pick yeah because it's I'm doing now is on the same field as well so for example if I have to start in some other I'll topic be, yeah. uh, in slightly different field then. I have to study between from this case. So I think that so, yeah. my resource alignment and interest. So if I, I, if, I, if I was to, let's say, summarize your points, then the main thing would be to go one step at a time, build upon your strengths, be passionate about it, and keep working hard. Yes, if, if we have to like directly compare with the association at Nepal, yeah. uh, I would say like gaining some experience, like, by volunteering or or internship exactly. is very crucial. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If I have not have haven't done the internship and master thesis or you know in yeah, this exactly. field, I would have not been interested to to accept this position. But exactly. as you should find a find a correct a mentor for you, yeah. and that might the networking is also very very helpful. It's yes. such. So everything, everything uh, needs to fall into place and you definitely have to keep uh, working as well. For yes, uh, I would say like everyone has got same time, that's 24 hours per day. It's yeah. on you, how you use your time. You, you can use your time to scroll kilometer of Facebook and Instagram or, you know, to write, write a few lines email to the person who can mentor you. Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of free resources, you know, like. In, for example, in YouTube, you can find the courses from MITs and some Ivy League exactly. universities for free. Exactly. It's, it's and, and by the way, the Gurukul Collective is also <laughs> trying to do that. Now I'd like to ask you my fourth question that I've prepared for you, which is what specific problem are you trying to tackle in your PhD research right now? I want to know more about your academics and the technicalities of what you're doing. So could you share any exciting findings that you've come across, some breakthroughs you've made so far? Uh, regarding your research? I would like to first talk about my master thesis because it's connected to my PhD right now. In my master thesis, I looked into the redox properties of various cofactors in photosystem 2, which is an enzyme complex, so first enzyme complex of photosynthesis. As we all know, photosynthesis is only the way of nature to convert solar energy into chemical energy. So it, it does this by using the light energies and water to to give oxygen and Carbohydrate ultimately. So I I I, I track down the redox properties, how the electron flows after splitting it oxygen evolving complex in the photosystem too. And now currently I'm looking at 
how the coupling between the charge transfer state and local excited state uh, affects the optical and energy electron transfer properties. And now I am looking how fast the electron transfer from the uh, transferring the reaction center of photosystem to there has not been any any breakthrough yet. So if you don't mind, could you also explain it in Nepali? Because I think it'll be easier for me and also to the audience to understand uh, better. Well, uh, what the photosynthesis one was, yeah, was solar energy like chemical energy, matambardone, mesosco, only wave. Of those equipments on the heli, light, sunlight, no water, don't plan to use, but you plans to say ultimately oxygen evolving complex. Oishi one can say water like split gorger, electron oxygen breakdown gorger. What the oxygen so we take breathing, right? So electrons say the bibina mad them were transform. They ultimately it is a carbon fixation cycle the lancer, but they say ultimate product money go carbide in general terms food. Food one of the inner. Are you my little body rabbit? So oxygen evolving complex electron. Split wounds as well, low bar, which is the reaction center, PS2 go reaction, photo system 2 go reaction center. Now, what is the electron cosari? Kiki, who is it? Who is the electron transfer? Who is it? 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 One year, oh, primary except one year, because fear of fighting D1. And it's the lower field D1, but the fear of fighting D1, ma, electron transfer, mm -hmm. kunsa, one day, but as So, what did we kunsa, one day, but I'm going to do all the uh, assumptions. Uh, assumptions are good, huh? No, so for example, assumptions are good, huh? One, one by 300 frames per second. Oh, one day, kind of you, theoretical assumptions are good, huh? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly, I said, you know, that our early mileage is you that's a good Different method or combined word, right? Calculate, got me, press, word, right? But could you also explain a bit on the applications of this? In practical applications, like you ask, it can be used for like artificial photosynthesis or to increase the you know, efficiency of solar cells, which, for example, non solar cells, they are not so efficient. Okay. But they are increasing. The efficiency will definitely yeah, and benefit. And infuser, it might be. It's yes. still like. In it's uh, still in the sci science fiction, fiction yeah. like, okay. yes, it's, it's kind of a fiction, but in the future, it might be solar fuel, okay, yeah. which might be the very sustainable way of energy. If you know, if you you already know, like energy is one of the biggest parts of in the world, like renewable energy, sustainable energy. And if we have like the sun, which is there for like a lot. And we'll be there for many, many years if we can use that solar energy for creating some kind of renewable fuels, which is called solar fuels. But that's the future, that's the direction where the research is headed, but it might take some Not like it. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's that's really good to know. So the 2024 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to David Baker for computational protein design and to Demis Hassabis and John Jumper for developing AlphaFold, an AI model that predicts protein structures. Given that your research in biophysics intersects with these areas, can you explain how these breakthroughs relate to your work? Do these achievements inspire or influence your current research directions as well? It motivates a lot. I mean, when it was, last time, it, when it was given to theoretical computation of image, it was in 2013 for multi-scale modeling. And now, after like nearly more than ten years, we got another. So I'm back to department. Not department. <laughs> our field. Yeah. I mean, the the field which I'm really interested in, and it, it gives you a lot of a lot of English. Okay, so my next question is for the Nepali students who are watching. What advice would you like to give to the students who are interested in pursuing research in biophysics or related fields in chemistry, physics, biology, whatever? Are there any specific scholarships or collaborations they should look into uh, to make the, their dreams come true? The first way you should find, really find what you are interested in. Yeah. Though that should be the fuel for you to motivate you every day. So you should do some kind of self-reflection. Take advice from the people who have achieved 
something academically or professionally. Research, research it, it involves a lot of uh, trial and errors. Like if you, you have to always learn from your mistake and it, you should take the errors or your failure as an opportunity to learn instead of taking it as a setback. Yeah. So I think with correct determination and right approach, anyone is capable of achieving extraordinary things. Yeah. And for the nephews who are like curious, yeah, yeah. so what to do you, now it's at my time, we have very limited access to the internet. Yeah, yeah. But now it's not the same. Yeah. You know, you have access to internet. You should know what you should look at internet. There are lots of lot of online resources. Yeah. You should seek such opportunities, for example, if you wanna pursue high in educations, it generally might be a very good option for master's degree. Yeah. And yeah. Seek internship and get some experience at early stages. Yeah. That will really make a difference. You know, you can learn like for theoretical knowledge, it's useless unless you can apply in your daily life. Right. So you set some small achievable goals, yeah. stay persistent and embrace the failures and learning opportunity instead of instead of taking it as a setback. And the most important thing I would say. Is, is you have to be resilient, yeah. you know. Getting rejection is part of the process. If you don't get success at first attempt, second attempt, you should keep trying. Yeah. That's why the, f the driving force behind should be your interest. Not like I will get the very good opportunity or this field is so good in making money. At some point, you will give up if you... If those are your uh, those are your motivations, yeah. so your driving force should always be your interest. And if you don't know what you are interested in, that's what where the mentorship and internship comes into play. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm 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 just a beginner stage researcher, right? Yeah. But there are a lot of nephews who are very successfully successful, who are very accomplished in the field of research, especially in science, yeah. all around the world. So you should try to find reach out to them. Reach baby. out to them. It's not too difficult to to send the request to email and getting connections, uh, sending few lines email. Yeah, exactly. You know, mentoring one or two students per year is, is not a difficult task for anyone. I think if someone approaches, for example, from me to, for asking or seeking help, like for example, undergrad student, I would be really open and very happy to help. Yeah. And I, I, I hope like there are a lot of Nepalese like, like me yeah. all around the world who are more successful and more accomplished than me. Yeah, exactly. So you should really knock the door. Yeah, yeah that's, that's... Knock the door instead of scrolling. Thank you very much for your time. But before you go, I do have one last question for you. So after your PhD, what's next? What are your future goals? Uh, will you continue in academia, move into industry, uh, or bring your expertise back to Nepal? What do you think it's going to be for you in the future? Well, for now, for now, the only only goal is to finish the PhD. And after my PhD, my plan is to continue as a postdoctoral researcher either here in Europe or or United States of America in the field of molecular modeling or simulations. Yeah, I am still yet to figure out what I will do next after that. But I think it's the plan set for next five, six years. And I think the situation, personal and the Nepal situation is also very dynamic. And I would like to return to back to Nepal at one point because the this is what I'm doing now, which is, is, is this field is still in very juvenile stages in Nepal. So I, my my guess now is I can contribute a lot after maybe after like 10 years when I'm ready to be an independent researcher. Mm. But let's wait and see how the life falls out. And thank you very much, much so for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to share my insights. It's, it has really been a pleasure. Thank you.